people. Hope everyone is good. So this one is a little tactical breakdown on, as you can see by the thumbnail, Patrick Ramford. But it's not just him, all right? There's a lot of play around that that equals performance, a good move, a well put together move. There's a lot of aspects I liked in this game which we adapted. Um, I know people. If people are just come, I know most of you guys. I know my audience is really. I really respect you're all brilliant. But there is one or two that you know probably come from other places. <laughs> just gonna be banned from this. Right, cool. This is not that video. This is a video to show what I liked about the goals and how we won the game. That's all it is. Um, people can make statements about Bamford and make up stuff. I just go by what I see, and that's by what they see. I don't know how people see certain things, but it's what it is. Let's get into the video. Why did I do that? This is not the end. This is the start. So the first, the first kind of part of this, I'll move my head, I'll move myself up here. The first kind of part of this it is the first few minutes of the game, um, or the first half of the game. And for the first bit, I'm just going to show a little detail. This was kind of a, a warning for Sheffield Wednesday in a certain aspect. It's just a detail. Um, and again, people, I'm not coming here and giving you tactical analysis that is mind-blowing all the time, either. <laughs> you know, but... It's just details. That's what analysis is about. It's about small details. It's huge. Anyone can say, look, look at that picture. It's about how does that picture affect the game? How do the details affect the game? And that's what I'm trying to show here. So I'm not saying, look at this mesmeric movement, this mesmeric play about details. All right, it's simple things, basic things that are required in any game to, for any good side. But yeah, this is it, Patrick Bamford. And again, it's that constant thing i keep saying about and, and i'm seeing people say his movement's bad and stuff and completely wrong sorry um it's just the basic movement it's anticipating it's having the experience to know where you should be patrick Bamford's, bamford's position in this instance here is again between the center backs now it's very clear that the space to vacate is in here and a lot of strikers will play in front of that guy and make that run bamford doesn't because what he does recognises that Firpo at the trigger is when Firpo makes his movement forward. Now, this is offside, but this is, a, this is a warning. So Sunville has the ball. Firpo makes that running behind. And Bamford's ready. The defenders are not. This guy has no idea what Bamford's going to do. He's trying to play the offside trap. They're not great at it. Clearly, this line isn't great. Two of them are playing it. Two of them are not. You exploit that with smart movement and timing of run. So the ball goes through. And now look where Bamford is. And that's the anticipation and knowing where you're going to go before the defender knows where you're going to go. Bamford is in front of them all. He's in front of them. He's left them. And this was a warning. This is what I mean. So is Nonto. We have, and look, from this position here, we're kind of waiting and you see Junior Firpo go. That's the trigger. And he's in front of all these defenders. He knows this is the last man. He's playing on his shoulder. And now you're in front of them. The better cross, he's in. Or if it wasn't offside. But that's a warning. That's my point. It's a small detail. About that movement, anticipation, where to make the run, when to make the run, where the run is coming from, the trigger to when to advance forward. And you leave yourself in a situation where you're in front of the entire defence. Not bad for someone who can't move. The next detail is this. Can anyone see this? A long ball. There's a lot of talk about long ball. Now, there's a, there's, a, there's a conception that to play beautiful football, it can't be a long ball. For me, and I guess style is, again, down to the coach. It's down to what the coach believes in, the principles the coach is believing. A lot of coaches are highly adaptable coaches who, who, whose core style is to adapt to the opponents and exploit their weaknesses and nullify their strengths. And to an aspect, every team is trying to do that. But what we've noticed and how we've adapted this season you look at our early play, it's very predictable. And that's fine because some of the best teams in the world are very predictable. But how effective, it's not how good you are, it's how effective you are at that. How many moves, how, many, how much possession generates into chances. We create a lot of chances. That's not an issue, right? For the main part, it's taking them chances. And that's the clinical side of the game. That's a completely different mindset, the style. But what we've done in this particular move is adapted to the opponent. So again, this is the picture right here. And this is how I broke it down. So look at Ampadu, by the way. He's on the ball up here. Look, and it's that long ball over the top, which we tried three or four times and should have got in one or two of them. And again, 
So before this, we went wide and we came back in. So this guy was forced to press Ampadu. It's that box press. It's not allowing anything, as you can see. Gruev is tightly marshaled in there. Um, and Kamara is tightly marshaled in there, one for one, man for man. But what this does, what we did really well, was kept Cree out wide. That's a key detail in this. This fullback is not involved in this move to create an overload defensively. He's staying out wide. And now what you've got is a one, two, three versus one, two, three. The three v three. High. And that's the key. Look how high their line is. Now that's fine because obviously when they're pressing, which they are to an extent, they're playing very high. You want to not allow space into the midfield, right? Obviously, hence why they're so tight around Gruev, hence why they're man for man here. This guy is sitting more central. One, and this guy is cutting the pass off to Rodon. This guy is sitting more central, so there's no space in here for maybe Georgie or Bamford to pick up the ball. Also, to force them out wide so we can't play through the middle. They don't want us to play through the middle because they know that's where we'll exploit them because then when we play through the middle, we can expand, right? That's why they've got a high line. They have to because if there's no high line, there's so much base in here and we have quicker players than them, so it will work. Also, detail on this guy. So stop Archie and Vern as well, I guess, to an extent, but we don't really do that. But what you've got it's about using attributes of players and adapting. Is this guy Ethan Ampadu, who has got a 40 yard pinger in him, does it often in this game. And it works. Great chances from it. If you've got that and you notice these guys play a high line, exploit this space. They're going to stop you playing out centrally. And they're man for man out wide. And then they're stopping anything go to the right. Go high. Why not? Do it. We did it under Bielsa, loads. So many times where teams were trying Packers into a certain area, and all it took, it was either, look, whoever's on that left, it was even Harrison, Dallas, whoever it was, just literally shot up the line. And either Ben White, Calvin Phillips, picked the ball up in these positions here and did that same thing. Ball straight over the top in this area for either our strikers or the winger. Perfect to feet because that's what they have. That's what they've got in their locker. And we used that yesterday. And this is good movement. Look, 3v3. Cree's staying out of this. His movement is when the second ball is won. Because he's just pinning that fullback in. He can't get involved in this and create an overload, right? Again, with Kamara. Just vacating this area to make it a 3v3 on the back line. It's good movement. It's good adaptation from Farker and it's, it's good play. It's clearly something they've worked on. They've held the width. The timing of the runs is brilliant. And they're all in the right position. The second Ampadu gets that ball, they know this is the out. You've got to have more than one out. And this is short signs that we're adapting and we're doing this. We did it earlier and we got a great goal from it. I can't remember who it was, but when Ampadu did it to Rutter, we've got it in our locker. And when teams play a high line, now when teams are trying to press, you know, this is a way we'll exploit you. It makes it even more dangerous. There's more aspects to our play. There we go, people. Here's the gold. So again, as you can see, as I showed previous, it's this one again. It's high ball. Although it, it, we weren't quite set up perfectly for this situation, but what we did from the high ball is reacted well. That second ball, winning that second ball in midfield. There it is. Ball goes up. This guy wins it. He was massive, by the way. Um, he wins the ball. They win it in here, but what we do quick is pounce. And just move my head again. With three around the ball. Aggressive going forward around the ball. Then you've got Nonto off the ball as well, and Georgina you know, Rutter ready to receive in a position. Now, this is where the move starts, and again, it came from that long ball, which I spoke about before. That's the, that's the, the foundation of the move. Now, this is the goal. So, first, look at Baf Patrick Banford's movement here. As you can see, you know, doing what he always does, and people won't talk about this because they don't want to, but it's fine. Playing on the blind side. Now, a lot of, I guess a lot of strikers would play in this central area. But the key here is the second movement. So he plays on that blind side when he thinks the first cross is coming in because Junior Firpo's overlap, doesn't get it. <laughs> what confuses them so much? 
he's he's never seen they never really know where he is and he's always in a position where he can react before them and they're focused on him and not the cross coming in that is key if you're easily in front of the defender they know exactly where you are they can just focus on where the cross is coming and how to intercept but if they don't know where you are they can't can't focus on the cross they're focusing on you doing this then the cross has come across and you can't react and that's what's key. In this area now, there's no one else in the box. There's no other focus. So he's got to make the job difficult for the defender. And he has. He does that right now. Herpo gets the ball away. Unbelievable cross, by the way. The cross is just as good as the movement and the goal. The cross is unbelievable. But this is it. This is understanding where the striker will be and having that experience to know exactly where to put the ball and then the experience to know where the ball's going to come. Wavelength, same goal. And again, now look at those. the cross comes in. There's no other threat, really. That's because Bamford occupies this box. There's no other threat. Again, why don't they deal with it? One, it's an excellent cross. Two, Bamford is nothing. He's wrestling with the player. The player has no idea. The player is not looking at the cross. This guy has no idea where the cross is. Not a clue. He's bothered about him. And that's what's key. Because Bamford knows exactly the area this is going in. And the defender has no idea. That is key. And that's all to do with movement. If if he's in front of him slightly here, he can watch him. He can't. Doesn't know where the ball is. You have no idea where the ball's going. Leads to this. Bamford has the exact idea where it's going. Unbelievable cross. And now you're in no man's land. Defends him on no man's land. He has no idea where the cross is. As soon as he finds out where it crosses, it's too late because Bamford's already made the run in this area. The back stick. Across the box. Perfect cross. Perfect movement from both of them. Good move. Again, it's hardly any threat. There's the only one. There's one area and there's one space where he could have done it and it's an excellent ball and an excellent finish. Final goal. And again, I put this screenshot in because this is where it comes from. A long high ball again. We've got that in our locker, people. Don't underestimate it. We did it under Bielsa. People forget that. A lot of times in games under Bielsa where it wasn't working, teams wouldn't let's play out. You know, we didn't quite have it. The passes weren't quite sharp enough. Trust me, go. But there's games on YouTube you can watch. There's times in them games where it is slow. And we can't build out the way we want a lot of times. The difference is when we weren't, we were unbelievable. Teams set up against you to try and stop it. And sometimes they get it right. Because professional footballers with professional elite managers who know how to stop things. They've got a lot of experience. So you need to find ways of winning. Certain aspects in your game. You don't change your style, you just adapt certain areas in games, certain scenarios. And that's what we did. So Mesley gets the ball up. And this is literally that like, is so high. What is key here is the expectation. Like, you look at Somerville. <laughs> Move my head. Look at Somerville, for example. Like balls balls up here, balls are gone. Look at Somerville. No expectation. This, even even now in like, Kamara, you know, <laughs> no one's in a position where, like, oh, yeah, this is an attack. But Bamford is, and so is Nonto. Even Rutter, to an extent, he's kind of just waiting. Hopefully Bamford wins that flick on, and he can flick it in behind Nonto. What's weird, I put a question mark, because I don't know why this guy is going on Bamford. I don't know why the big lad is not sending his cover. But wild. But we exploited that, and that's what you're here to do. That's what you need to do in football, exploit their weaknesses. Bamford holds him off. I can't really show the video, but holds him off really well. Stronger than he looks. And the second he holds that off for a junior uh, he's ready. And this is what I mean. This is how dangerous we can be. We can kill a game off in 10 seconds from a high ball from Meslier into an area. We killed the game off. A touchdown from Bamford, a pass from Rutter, a finish in the space of five seconds. That's how dangerous we can be. We can exploit teams for this. There we go. Unbelievable centre forward play by Bamford. Good movement from Rutter. Oh, he's, now, now he's won it. He's like, oh, oh, this is me. And then the quick thinking, Nonto's ready. Love that from Nonto. Ready, ready. Time did run really well. Finally, we've had a lot of our size. It annoys me. We're ready to go. We know it ends. Goal. And this is what's key. It comes from a long ball again, but it comes from the centre forward making the most out of the, the situation he's on in the pitch. The 1v1 in there. 
and he wins that battle and he sets it. He doesn't just win it, he sets it off the guy next to him. And then Nonto is ready. And boom. Within five seconds of a ball being in the air, we've won the game. That's how good we are. That's how drainers we can be. That's it, people. Let me know what you think. Look, this is not a... When you do these videos, people say, yeah, but Bamford, I don't care. I'm not... I don't care. I'll praise a player when he's done well. I've done so many videos where I've criticised players in certain moves, in what they've done and what they should do, in my opinion, and what I think the manager wants them to do in certain situations. I'll do that. If a player or a team has done well and a certain move is well, I'll praise it. Simple. Let me know what you guys think. I appreciate the support. Yeah. Good performance from a few players yesterday, especially our striker. So, I'll praise it. Peace.